Hello everyone, it's Dr. Sam. I'd like to welcome you to my Eye Clarity Podcast. This is a show that offers cutting edge information on how to improve your vision and overall wellness through holistic methods. I so appreciate you spending part of your day with me. If you have questions, you can send them to hello at drsamburn.com. Now to the latest Eye Clarity episode. All right, so I want to at least talk to you about the physical eye therapy exercises. Okay. Because this is where you get into the habits with your eyes. Like what, and you know, even say habits, what do you mean? Like how your brain and your eyes interface. Mm -hmm. And there are certain skills in vision. So vision is different than reading the eye chart. Reading the right. eye chart is I'm looking at a chart that's like your eyesight, but vision is this skill of how the eyes track an object, they focus, they change the focus with the muscles, the coordination of the eyes, uh, how they work together, mm-hmm. and then how well you're able to de-stress your eyes. Because one of the problems that happens with people is they don't know how to discharge the accumulated stress. I mean, our eyes are like a sponge. Mm -hmm. They absorb the environment. They absorb, you know, so do you want to absorb stress or do you want to absorb uh, therapeutic things? Right. Uh, So I'm just going to go through a couple of possibilities You don't have to do this, but I'm going to at least mention it. Okay. So the eyeball has six muscles that move the eyes around. And for most of us, we stay in a very tunneled, you know, position. We're not doing a lot of movement. Mm -hmm. So one of the exercise is basically using your thumb and kind of tracing something around the room. So let's do this right now. Okay. Cover your left eye. Okay. Take your thumb, your thumb out, and mm-hmm. pick something like across the room. It could be a, a shelf, a cabinet, a painting, a window. Okay. And just trace your thumb around the object by moving your thumb, like the thumb is tracing the at the edge. Be aware of your breathing. Be aware of your blinking do it in one direction and then do it in the other direction and let me know when you're done. Okay. Okay. So you done? Mm Mm-hmm. All right. So what I'd like you to do now is take your hand, you can put your hand down, the thumb Mm -hmm. down. Okay. And then take your hand away from me, from the other eye. And now Mm -hmm. look around and give me an impression what you see, what you feel when you re- reintroduce the left eye after you've stretched the right eye. Brighter, clearer, more peripheral. Yeah, it, it, it is a little brighter actually, yeah. So the key in having good vision is allowing light to come into the eyes. Okay. So when you cover an eye and you do that kind of stretching and then you reintroduce the eye, you're accessing something called neuroplasticity. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I do. Yeah. So you're creating a new, new track, a new pathway now that the right eye has changed and now the left eye has to make an adjustment. So Mm -hmm. you get more clarity and more relaxation. And now let's do the other eye. So cover the right eye with your left thumb. Again, pick something out, trace it around in each direction. When you do it, be mindful. I'm breathing, I'm blinking, so I'm not just holding my breath. And then let me know when you're done.
Oh yeah, it's a lot brighter. <laughs> a lot brighter. Yeah. So that is a really easy way for you to bring more circulation and oxygenation by stretching the muscles okay. and moving each eye separately. So I'll send you a, a video on this. It's called the thumb game. And you basically just play with, you could do it with clouds in the sky. You could do it, you know, just anything beyond, you know, 10 feet where you're, you're just doing this little tracing thing with each it's eye. Varying distances. Yeah, varying your distances. Okay. Because in farsightedness, what happens is what you have is you're losing your ability to focus at different distances. Uh-huh. Okay. The magnification lens makes everything bigger. Bigger. So yeah. your mind goes, why bother? I'll just use the magnification. Uh-huh. Okay. That's good. Okay, so that's one. A second exercise is more of a focusing exercise where you're using both eyes at the same time. And it's a coordination exercise. So what I'm going to send you is a sheet of paper with um, eight, uh, four symbols. Well, two symbols, eight symbols, two mm -hmm. in each row. Okay, so you look at the top row. Again, I'll send you directions of video and the, and the chart. You okay. hold the paper right up to your nose. That's weird. And then you mentally look through the paper and you push it out about 10 inches. And those two symbols that you started with now become three symbols. And when they become three symbols at arm's length, it means your left eye is focusing on the left symbol. The right eye is focusing on the right symbol. And the middle symbol has both eyes kind of connecting in the middle. So you get the three symbols and you move it around like I'm doing. Mm -hmm. up and down you know, maybe for about 30 seconds to a minute, and then you go on to the next pair. Same thing. Okay, so you've got four pairs that you're going to, two turn into three. And as they turn into three, and you move it around, you are exercising both eyes together, and you're relaxing your vision in the midst of focusing it. Okay. So you spend maybe three to four minutes on the sheet, on the exercise, you know, and it'll just, it's a calisthenic that reminds your eyes and your brain to be integrated so that one eye is not doing more than the other eye. Mm -hmm. And you'll notice that after you do it for a few days, your eyes are going to feel more limber. They're going to feel more vital, like more awake, more active. And this is then where you can start coming down on the on the magnification part, because you're now exercising the muscles, uh -huh. and the exact opposite of what the glasses are doing, which disconnects you from your muscles. Okay. Okay. All right. So again, I'll send you a video and a and the sheet shot uh, sheet on that. Okay. There's one more exercise I talked about. How do you de-stress your eyes? How would you even know how to do that. We're not taught, you know, we, we stretch our body, we relax, we breathe, you know, whatever you're doing. So I'm going to show you an exercise I've created now. We're going to do it. And, and so what you're going to do right now is rub your hands together one time for about 10 seconds, get the heat going. And then you're going to call, palm the, put the palms of the hands over your mm -hmm. eyes and they're closed. So go mm -hmm. ahead and show that. All right, now I want you to do a normal breath in. Inhale through your nose. On the exhale, mouth is closed, and I want you to make a low, audible, so I can hear it, humming sound. Go ahead and try it. Breathe in through the nose. On the mm -hmm. exhale, keep your mouth closed. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, let's do it again. Mm -hmm.
I'm supposed to be okay. breathing. Assuming. Breathe in through the nose. On the exhale, keep your mouth closed so you're vibrating the sound in your mouth and in your face. Keep going. Mm. And breathe out, very, breathe out very slow. Well, you're breathing out while you're making the humming sound. So the, 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 the oxygen is leaving Mm -hmm. as yeah keep going one more okay now keep your eyes closed and just mm -hmm. drop your hands keep your eyes closed just drop your hands and can you report to me what you're feeling? Um, Anything I, that's in your awareness? Um, I, I, like I, I don't know. I definitely sense a lot of light around me, even though my eyes are closed. That's fine. It, whatever it is. How about on a body level? Do you feel any tingling? Do you feel a release? Do you feel um, your eyes more? Do you like like bring it into the body? What? Yeah, I mean, I do definitely feel my eyes. I did feel a little bit of tingling like in my nose, kind of my upper um, lip area. OK, all right. Perfect. Now I want you to open your eyes. I want you to look around the room. Mm -hmm. everything's really bright and clear yeah so what you did there is you released stress and tension that maybe you've been carrying for a little bit and as you know when we carry stress anywhere it lowers the circulation and when you feel the tingling and by the way the sinuses are very connected to the eyes the jaw is very connected to the eyes. What you did there is you, but the sound was a way for you to release the tissue. Okay. The eye tissue, the face. And so I would make this a daily practice. And whenever you remember, do this palm hum. Okay. Your hands are like tuning forks. So when you have them over the eyes, part of that sound somewhere is traveling into the eye tissue, the vitreous, the eyelids, the retina, in a way that is creating more circulation. And it's, in other words, you're not holding the eyeballs in a certain position. Okay. And we did that, what, like six times? How many times do we do yeah, that? Yeah, six times, six times. That's all you need. You know, you want to do enough where you're building some momentum. Mm -hmm. But okay. I want to give you something. I want to give you something to chew on here. All right. A statistic. So um, as you know, I'm kind of a eclectic eye doctor. I work with a lot of different modalities. And one of the modal, two of the modalities I've studied are kind of like craniosacral therapy. It's a body-centered therapy mm -hmm. called somatic. Mm -hmm. I have also studied uh, somatic experiencing. Peter Levine, when I taught at Esalen in California, um, it was about getting in touch with what's my body feeling. And the eyes are like a dead zone. We don't feel our eyes very much. Mm -hmm. And... Um, we just don't feel feel our eyes. We, you know, the eye doctor says, "Hey, wear a lens and see you later," and I'll make it stronger. Mm -hmm. And so, um, when I would study with these therapists, these body centered therapists, and Rolfer, Ida Rolf, Rolfers, Emily Conrad, and Continuum Movement, they all said the same thing to me because I was the only eye person in the room. You know, and what kind of eye doctor would study the body? 60 to 80% of body tension is carried in the eyeballs. Wow. The 80%, I mean, you think about that, 
and you go, wow, you know, I mean, you think about how we relate the first, one of the first ways we look at something, we look, we tighten, we react, mm -hmm. you know, and how do we get rid of that, you know, the way we don't, we just kind of keep perpetuating this lockdown. And then you go to an eye doctor and you're in lockdown already. And so then the eye doctor is going to give you a lens that's going to reinforce the lockdown that you're already in. Mm -hmm. No wonder you couldn't wear any of those prescriptions because there's a part of you that's um, aware enough to say, I feel this, this is not right. Mm -hmm. well, and then you start second guessing yourself because you go, well, it doesn't feel right, but he's the doctor, you know, he's the authority, he knows. Mm -hmm. And no, he's basing a prescription on some idea he learned in a textbook and like this is the formula this is what you do so he's not even really looking at your body's response or your response mm -hmm. and so then you have to come up with well let me try this older prescription because that's probably when you were looser you know you were in a situation where you had less stress so you mm -hmm. go back to the old, well they don't like that because they're like well wait a minute that's not your current <laughs> right you know it's it's all based on some idea and i you know i i know i know these guys because i go to conferences they all have the same idea well you know at 40 you need reading glasses and 50 you need bifocals and 60 you get you know vitreous detachment and 70 you get cataracts and then at 80 you go blind that's kind of in the textbook mm -hmm. well how come i have an 84 year old right now who is not wearing progressive lenses anymore she's healed her cataracts her prescription keeps getting better and better every couple of months because she's doing eye exercises and she's 84 years old. Mm -hmm. They would say, well, it's just an anomaly. It's an antidote. You know, it's all in the it's placebo. I don't know what they would say. But the thing is, is that 60 to 80% of body tension, if you want to keep your vitreous intact, de-stress your vision. And you okay. felt some things energy moving by mm, simple you know mm -hmm. and by doing that and if you get into the you know the the space of well let me just chill into this um it's a game changer you're going to start seeing more clearly in the distance and you're going to start being able to maybe pick up some reading words with the computer glasses mm. and you know it's just going to keep getting better of course, if you go to the doctor, you know, they're going to, I had a lady on Instagram, she wrote me and she, she was telling him about some of the things she was doing. And she said his response was he just laughed at me. Oh, okay. Instead mm -hmm. of like, you want to go to a practitioner and says, you know, I'm curious, what are you doing? That's interesting. Wow. I didn't know that. Like a naturopath or an acupuncturist, they're a little more open minded. They were curious, you know. Mm -hmm. but, we're trained in a very fixed model and you know obviously it's not working for you i mean for a lot of people it is they just follow along that's cool my, yeah. my, my approach isn't for everybody i'm not thank you for listening i hope you learned something from the eye clarity podcast show today if you enjoyed the episode, make sure to subscribe on iTunes or Spotify and leave a review. See you here next time.